Alrighty guys, what's going on? Linky here. And for those of you who did not see the Nintendo Direct dedicated to Pokemon in the last couple weeks, we got two big game announcements. The first of these was Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, quote unquote faithful remakes to the original Pokemon Diamond and Pearl on the Nintendo DS. The other one we got was Pokemon Legends Arceus, a brand new open world single player Pokemon game that is due out next year. I talked about Legends Arceus last week, but this week we're going to take a look at Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. It's going to take me a little bit to get used to those names. We're going to talk about why I think there's going to be more new features in this game than we might originally think. Let's discuss it. Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Pokemon Shining Pearl. Faithful remakes, according to Nintendo, developed by Ilka Inc., the development studio that worked on the Pokemon Home application for the Nintendo Switch and for mobile devices. And Jinichi Masuda is, is helping with development as well. It's important to point that out. This came as a surprise. Now, if you were on the internet a couple of hours before this announcement came out, there were leaks, and the leaks were 100% accurate. They revealed what the remakes would be, and they also revealed Legends Arceus. And I'll be honest, for a lot of people, I think this announcement came as a bit of a shock. I think, and I myself was included in this, a lot of the community felt that we were going to be getting Diamond and Pearl remakes in the style of Pokemon Sword and Shield. We were going to see the art style transfer over, and we were going to see the Sinnoh region in 3D with certain aspects linear, certain aspects open, possibly the inclusion of the Dynamax feature since it's the gimmick of the generation. We kind of felt that Game Freak was going to just kind of go by the numbers with this. This is what they do with their remakes. When we got Fire Red and Leaf Green, it was on the Emerald uh, and Ruby and Sapphire engine. When we got Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver, while there were tons of improvements, it was running on the Diamond and Pearl engine, a refined version of that engine. Oras was on the X and Y engine, probably the most one for one of any of these. It brought over the gimmick from X and Y, which was Mega Evolution. So we were all kind of expecting this to be how these remakes were also going to take place. They're not. Game Freak decided to give us two Sinnoh games in the span of a couple months. Now, and the announcement trailer said that Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl were going to be coming out at the end of this year, late 2021. I'd be willing to bet it's October. I don't think they want this game to come out in November because I'm not so confident that we're not going to see another big heavy hitting Nintendo game that month. And if Legends Arceus holds its release date, which is scheduled to be the beginning of 2022, even though aside, I'll do a whole video on this. I don't expect that to be met. I would think March, and I don't think Game Freak wants two major titles, two main series titles, to be coming out so close to one another. It's it's unprecedented in terms of how Game Freak releases their games, and even though uh, Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl are not developed by Game Freak, there's a lot of reasons for us to think there's still going to be a lot of connectivity between these remakes and the rest of the core Pokemon franchise. And that's where we're going to begin. They claim that these games are going to be faithful remakes to Diamond and Pearl. And if we're talking about taking the map, taking the character designs, and just upscaling them to an HD resolution with the same art style, that's pretty much what they've done. I think there's been a lot of criticisms, as I draw my earbuds, a lot of criticism about the design, the art direction of these games. And I agree in one way. I think the backgrounds and the world, the environment itself, looks really crisp. It looks really good. I think the lighting in a lot of these shots we saw looks really good. And I think that if they wanted to just do something faithful, I like their approach here. I think the Sinnoh region is gorgeous. I think the games are great. And the way that this game, the way this art direction for this game has gone, it's the kind of game that I would want to pull my Switch out, lay under the covers in bed like we all were when we were like eight years old, and play the game at night. That's the kind of feel that it gives me. It gives me a retro game kind of feel. And since the fact that we're getting another Pokemon game, I don't particularly mind this. Now, the one thing that I think most people agree on, and it's something that I share a sentiment of, is the chibi character art style does not look the best. The characters in the overworld look far too toyish for my liking. They look, they look worse than the ones in the Link's Awakening remake, which the game looks great. It runs kind of poorly in some instances, but... The models are better in those games than they are here. Now, there's a lot of months until release, and there's a chance that they could polish these 
these sprites, these open world, these character designs, however you want to call it. I hope they do because it does not look the best. It's something that I'll get over, but that's the one part of the art style that I think, objectively speaking, I would single out and say, this does not look good. But other than that, that's all we saw. We saw some gameplay, we saw some battles. That's pretty much it. The rest of this information and the reason why we can extrapolate some from this entire discussion is a bit of toy news that we got in the week following the announcement. Now, we got the same thing the year that Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee came out. Months before those games came out, right when we were just learning about them, we got information about Mega Toys, Mega Evolution of Pokemon, that toys were coming out for them as a build-up to the release. And that would made, that made a lot of people ask, why would you be releasing Mega Evolution Pokemon as tie-ins for a game that isn't going to have Mega Evolution? Lo and behold, a couple months later, we find out that Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee has Mega Evolution. Toy sales matter for Pokemon games. It's, it is a historical thing. It's, it's, it's almost always true, and we've gotten the same thing already this year. There are going to be tie-in Mega Evolution Pokemon toys, specifically Mega Garchomp, Mega Lucario, I believe, was there, possibly. It was one of those two. And then Mega Charizard was another one of the Pokemon that's getting a toy. That tells us so much. First of all, if we're going along the same logic of toys mean something included in the game, which has been true for past Pokemon games, then we're getting Megas in this game. Megas were not in Diamond and Pearl. Megas were generations after Generation 4. That's one thing against the whole faithful remake idea. If we're getting Megas, then the doors are wide open to the changes that they could make in this game, even though the art style is more chibi, more toyish. Another thing is that there was a Kanto Pokemon on that toy list. Why would we be seeing Mega Charizard if what some people's fear was that this was going to be like Let's Go, where you only had the regional Pokedex? Charizard's not part of the regional Sinnoh Dex. This tells me, and I think I feel this confidently, that we're going to get a quote-unquote national dex of sorts in this game. I think we're going to get from Bulbasaur all the way to Arceus, I believe is the last Pokemon in the Sinnoh Dex. We're going to get 493 Pokemon in this game. I don't think we're going to get anyone further, but I think we're going to get Gens 1, 2, 3, and 4, and I think we're going to have the ability to bring Pokemon from Pokemon Home into this game and send Pokemon from Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl into Pokemon Home. I think that connectivity is going to be there. It's The platform is being developed by Ilka Inc. The game is being developed by the same guys who built the home platform. That connectivity already works, and since it's not Game Freak, some fans will be happy that they might feel some creative liberties to do things in a different way and kind of stretch the formula a little bit. I think that's entirely possible. I think that's probable. So I think we're getting Megas in Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, and I also think we're getting a up to 493 national decks. There have been some people who have wanted to go further and say, we're going to get every single Pokemon since you don't have to worry about Pokemon following you and there doesn't seem to be any like Pokemon Ami, Pokemon Refresh features in this game. You can just bring them all in. You're using the same models as Sword and Shield. It would be perfect. And I understand that feeling. I understand that sentiment. I just think that I think the only Pokemon that we might see are any that have evolutions or forms that we got in later gens, and they would build those in. So Alolan forms, I think you might be able to get those in Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Just like how we were able to get Alolan forms in Let's Go. And the good thing is, unlike Let's Go, which did not have a day-night cycle, which was stupid, this game does. We've seen plenty of screenshots of daytime and nighttime, so Ilka is giving us basic Pokemon. And I think this is a good holdover into Legends Arceus. I'm going to be picking up Brilliant Diamond. Inevitably, I'll also be picking up uh, Shining Pearl. Shining Pearl. Uh, because I always get every single Pokemon game, but I'm excited for these games. And I think the fact that there's been enough signs to this point that it's not going to be a straight port is good news. The additional thing that we also learned is that through some screenshots, there are some things we've seen that were not in Diamond and Pearl, but were in Platinum. For example, there were some characters in the overworld in Floraroma Town, as an example, that were in Platinum but were not in Diamond and Pearl, making a lot of people hope that we're going to be getting an up version of Platinum just put to Diamond and Pearl, meaning we would get the better Pokedex, the better regional decks. If you guys didn't know, the regional decks in Diamond and Pearl was almost like a major knock against ever playing it. it almost no fire types, almost no electric types, a, very few families to choose from, 
very restrictive on what Pokemon you could add to your team that would work with different combinations. And the good news is it seems that they're pulling from Platinum more, which also makes a lot of people hope that we could see the Battle Frontier. We could see the better Elite Four teams and Cynthia's better team. A lot of good things. We could see some post-game content with Garatina, maybe a Distortion World trip. The Distortion World in this art style would look really good. The lighting, as I'll highlight again, would look really good. But I want to know what you guys think. We've seen a lot of little nuggets about what these games' potential could be, and I think it's good, along with the music, which already sounds great. Do you guys think it looks good? Do you guys like the art style? Do you hate the art style? Let me know down in the comments. Do you want more videos on Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl? I don't know what their release cycle is going to be for information, so I would like to cover it, considering Gen 4 is my favorite gen, but what do you guys want? If you want more, we'll do more speculative stuff, some theory stuff, and I'll cover some of the news as it comes out. With that being said, I'm going to wrap up the video here. If you're not subscribed, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below so you never miss any content, and leave a like or a dislike if you didn't, if you didn't enjoy the video. That's fine too. It helps, it helps the channel regardless. With that being said, I've been Linky, and we'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.